questions. Uh, Mr. Aldag from the Liberal Party. Great, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Kruger, Ms. Uh, Strom, thank you for being here today. I um, was really interested uh, when I saw the comments uh, you, you mentioned that appeared in the media in August from some interviews that you've done. I think that um, as somebody uh, who has followed um, Western Canada's energy sector for a number of years, um, Suncor was always seen as a leader um, in uh, the sustainable energy area. And, and so I think, you know, I was really surprised. I think a lot of Canadians were surprised to see the, um, what I would consider a fairly aggressive um, moving away from some of those businesses, wind and solar, that had been developed over the years. And um, I, I, so I, I'd like to try and understand what you see as the future for energy in Canada. You would mentioned in your opening comments about um, oil and gas having a, a long horizon, yet I've seen um, you know, comments that we're going to see oil and gas peak within the next decade and then start uh, declining. And, um, it, but it seems like you're kind of doubling down right now and, and trying to get every last dollar out of that oil and gas sector. So wh where, do, where do you see us going um, as far as traditional oil and gas compared to renewables? And um, so that's kind of the first part of the question. And then the second part is, where does Suncor fit into that and this new vision that you seem to be putting out for the company? Yeah, I think, you know, let me start with the oil and gas. You know, there are a lot of various outlooks, whether it's whether and when it's going to peak and things. But I think the important thing to realize is oil and gas is a depletable resource. So if we do nothing, the world does nothing, there is a, depending on uh, gas, it may be a 5% per year, oil, it may be 7% per year, natural decline. So just to continue at today's demand levels requires ongoing investment. And I think the question, the question for me is where will that investment be made? It, uh, if the demand is there, I believe whether as a country, whether we choose to produce one less barrel that the world won't necessarily consume less barrel. So I think it's the opportunity where does Canada compete in the oil and gas sector. And my belief is that with efforts we're undertaking, whether I mentioned pathways, uh, blending renewable fuels, that we can continue to compete in that sector. So uh, I think oil and gas uh, has, a, has a long life ahead of it. It's, it's how we do it that will make it both most, more socially acceptable and more socially acceptable for within Canada. Now, renewables. I think renewables have a, have a huge role and a growing role in the uh, energy equation. Global energy demand continues to increase. And I don't think there's any one energy source that will meet that. So it's, I, I think it's not a uh, either or, it's an and equation. Whether that's renewables, whether that's continued uh, oil and gas or hydrocarbon uh, investments. So Suncor, we plan to be around a long time. We've been around a long time. We're a big company, a prominent company in the country. We plan to continue that. We plan to not only continue to extract value from our existing businesses, but grow new businesses. So where, where are we good at? You mentioned solar. If you look at over time, we were a pioneer and we got into wind and solar about 20 years ago. At almost the exact same time, we built a $250 million renewable fuels and ethanol plant, which is Canada's largest ethanol plant today. It provides renewable fuels for our coast-to-coast -coast network of Petro-Canada sites. Uh, a year ago, before I arrived, the decision was made to sell the, the wind and solar business to parties that we thought, the company thought, could uh, operate it better than we do. But at the same time, we're investing in our renewable facility sites because we think that's what we're good at. So it, it's a question of picking those things that you're best at as you participate in the transition. Uh, and I would say that, it, it's, you know, when you talk socially acceptable, I, I'm a, a member of parliament from British Columbia where we have fires and floods and, and climate change is very much, um, you know, real and upon us. And um, when you talked about socially acceptable, um, one of the discussions I hear about, you know, these massive profits that the oil and sector um, are, are generating right now, in one of the articles it talked about um, Suncor, um, um, second quarter, $1.88 billion dollars, uh, of earnings and $4 billion in the same period last year. And yet, you know, I, I think Canadians are asking, and my constituents for sure are asking, where are those profits going in helping us to deal with climate change and the effects of climate change? Um, the sector that you're in have had very real impacts on the planet and continue to. And, and so how do you see, you know, investments, um, you know, 
what are, what are the next round of investments that are going to be made to help um, reduce those impacts and get us to the net uh, zero um, economy uh, that we need by 2050? I, I guess that's the other question. Is Suncor still committed to, to that uh, transition to 2050? And, and where will the, um, the next round of investments go? Because what we're doing right now is simply not enough to, uh, to get us there. Well, I think, you know, are you through, sir? The, uh, I think your, your question's a good one in terms of, you know, our industry, the nature of we're a big company, it's big, big dollars. And I'll give you, I'll give you a few numbers to uh, tie in. Over the last three years, take full three full years, we've made in total $9 billion in profits over three years. We've paid $10 billion in income taxes and royalties to federal and provincial governments to build bridges and hospitals and schools. We've invested over those same three years $13 billion, more than we've made. Some of it is to maintain the health and well-being of our existing businesses, the safety and operational integrity, environmental responsibility, and an increasing share of it is going to new businesses. Last year, we spent $540 million on decarbonization uh, projects. So I think, you know, we are a industry and a company where the numbers are big, but when you break them down and you look at, we pay more than 50% of what we make every year, proud to do it, in taxes and royalties. And we're investing back not only to maintain our existing business, but to create those new businesses that I think I, I think I think we would agree are important to the, the country. I would have Thank liked you. to have gone into more of the decarbonization discussion, but the Thank you, Mr. Kruger. we need to move okay. on. And I 